فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم ديز اهل الراي they say we'll do qiyas on the Qur'an and the Sunnah. When there is a textual evidence that's already explaining it. They come with qiyas. Qiyas is not all bad as long as it meets the conditions which is four conditions. Other than that, the qiyas becomes madhmum. And it becomes blameworthy, right? Look at Iblis did the qiyas. What did he was his qiyas? Ana khayru minhu. Khalaqtani min narin. You created me from nar and you created Adam from teen. So I must be better than him. This is a qiyas which is fast. It's a corrupt analogy. The third types of people, who, so Iblis did he oppose the textual evidence? Did he oppose Allah? He opposed it. With what? A qiyas, that's fast. There are people who do that today. A third one is those who oppose the textual evidences based upon haqa'iqihim wa adwaqihim. They oppose the Qur'an and the Sunnah based upon what? They base it upon senses, the Sufiyya. You say, Ya Akhi, I, got, I had a dream, and I met. I had a dream last night, you know, and I saw something and I was told this is, and he opposes it. Huh? Or he'll say this person, he's become very strong, he's reached a level where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is showing him haqaiq, realities he's seeing. That's what they believe about the awliya. The fourth type of people are those who what? Ta'ifatun aradatu bi siyasat. Siyasatihim. They oppose the Quran and Sunnah based on politics. They want to oppose politics. These are ashabu siyasa. They come and they say the Quran and Sunnah. Well, look at, let's look at politics today. Look where it stands. Look at the world today. Blah, 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 blah. The fifth type of people are who? Ta'ifatun aradatu bi other people, they oppose the Qur'an and Sunnah based on false interpretation of the Qur'an and Sunnah. False interpretation. All of those are those who have opposed the Qur'an and the Sunnah. They've opposed it. And what is it that they've taken as a Lord? All of them took their desires as Lord. They refused to accept Allah and His Messenger. Allah said in the Quran, فَإِن لَمْ يَسْتَجِيبُوا لَكَ If they don't obey you, فَعَلَمْ أَنَّمَا يَتَّبِعُونَ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ If they don't obey you, then what you need to know is that they are following their desires. All of those five are people of desires. That's why the scholars call, it, call them أَهْلُ الْأَهْوَى That's why the scholars call them أَهْلُ الْأَهْوَى People of desires. Because they are not people أَهْلُ الْوَحِي They are not the people of revelation. They oppose the Quran. Allah also says, وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَى إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحِي وَحِي Is the Prophet Sallallahu upon Hawa or is he upon Wahi? Wahi. These people are upon Hawa. The opposite. You see how always, فَإِنْ لَمْ يَسْتَجِيبُوا لَكَ فَعَلَمْ أَنَّمَا يَتَّبِعُونَ أَهْوَى If they don't follow Muhammad, they are following their desires. وَمَا يَنْطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَى إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحِي وَحِي And then there are two nutq. There are two things. One is a revelation and one is desires. Also Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He said, وَأَنِحْكُمْ بَيْنَهُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ Judge between these people based on what Allah has sent down. وَلَا تَتَّبِعَ أَهْوَاءَهُمْ And don't follow their desires. Again, the way of revelation is on side, a side, and their desires is on another side. لِذَلِكَ What you find today is, this ayah where Allah says, وَأَنِحْكُمْ بَيْنَهُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ When you're judging the people, what do you judge them based on? Based on what? Based on what Allah has sent down. You don't judge the people based upon what? Their desires. And this is the majority of the people today's da'wah is becoming like that. Is that they want to give the people what the people want. And feed the people their desires. The religion has come to fight with the people's desires. The people don't want to take their medicine. They don't want to take their cure. And you're trying to give them that cure. So this qa'idah is very important. This principle is one of the most powerful principles that a person needs to understand and comprehend. Al Qaida to Tasia, the ninth Qaida. And the Muslimin, 
والصلاح أحوالهم مربوط بأمرين العلم النافع والعمل الصالح The ninth قاعدة is ظهور المسلمين Islam becoming apparent Islam becoming the upper hand وصلاح أحوالهم and the rectification of the situation of the Muslims مربوط it is connected to two things this is the ninth قاعدة the Muslims to be the upper hand the Muslims to be apparent they are prevailing وصلاح أحوالهم and the rectification of their situation is connected to two things العلم النافع beneficial knowledge والعمل الصالح and righteous actions beneficial knowledge and righteous action Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran هو الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى ودين الحق ليظهره على الدين كله ولو كره المشركون Allah said هو الذي أرسل رسوله بالهدى Allah said the Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم with what? بال هدى هدى in this verse means this is the the verse number is 33 سورة التوبة آية 33 سورة سورة التوبة الله سبحانه وتعالى what does he say? هو الذي أرسل رسوله الله sent his messenger بالهدى with what? with guidance the guidance here means العلم النافع beneficial knowledge هدى here means العلم النافع beneficial knowledge ودين الحق means what? العمل الصالح الله sent the messenger with two things العلم النافع beneficial knowledge and the second thing Allah sent the messenger with is what? العمل الصالح righteous actions those are the two things that the Prophet was sent with beneficial knowledge is what? الكتاب والسنة knowing the kitab and the sunnah that's beneficial knowledge العمل الصالح is what? That which is in, we done with sincerity and is in accordance to the sunnah. Does that make sense? The beneficial knowledge is the kitab and the sunnah. That's the most beneficial thing a person can learn. That's the beneficial knowledge. A righteous action is what? That which is done with sincerity and it's in accordance to the what? And it's in accordance to the sunnah. And it is accordance to the sunnah. وَلِذَلِكَ My beloved brothers and sisters, these two things only combine in the heart of a believer. Al-ilm al-nafi' beneficial knowledge wal amal al-salih and righteous actions is present in the heart of a believer. The people who are Christians and then Jews, they went short on this. The Christians, what did they come with? They came with actions without knowledge. And the Jews, they came with knowledge without action. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? That's why in the Salah we ask Allah, إِهْدِنَا الصِّرَاطَ الْمُسْتَقِيمِ Oh Allah, guide us to the straight path. What path? صِرَاطَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمْتَ عَلَيْهِمْ The path of those you have favoured. Who are the ones who Allah favoured? It was the ones who gathered between beneficial knowledge and righteous actions. غَيْرِ الْمَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ Who are the مَغْضُوبِ عَلَيْهِمْ the Prophet told us in the hadith of Adi ibn Hatim, he said the Yehud are the maghdub alayhim. Dalil ahu, the Nasara. So we're seeking Allah, we don't want those two parts. We don't want al-maghdub alayhim, the ones you are angry with, which is the Jews. And the Dalil, those who are misguided, which are the Christians. We don't, don't want to be from them. Are you with me brothers and sisters? وَلِذَلِكَ the Prophet The Prophet mentioned something. When he mentioned something, he said, The Prophet said, that's going to happen. The Prophet told, said something, and when he said it, he said after that, and that's going to happen at the time when knowledge will be lifted. So an, a companion by the name of Ziyad ibn Labid, he said, Ya Rasulullah, How is knowledge going to go? وَنَحْنُ نَقْرَأُ الْقُرْآنَ We are reading the Qur'an. وَنُقْرِئُ أَبْنَاءَنَا And we are making our children read the Qur'an. 
Our children's children are reading the Quran. How is knowledge going to go? The books are here. There they are. How is it going to go? Then the Prophet said, Ziyad. Ziyad, may your mother lose you. May your mother lose you. This is not a curse. In English translation, it comes across a curse, right? But in the Arabic language, it doesn't come across. Arabic. The translation is like that, but it's not a curse. Yeah? It's not said in a form of a curse. And everybody, their parents are going to lose him one day, right? Or he's going to lose his parents, or his parents are going to lose him. In kuntala, in kuntu la uraka min afqahi rajul bil Medina. The Prophet said, I used to see you as from being from the one of the most knowledgeable people of Medina. Ya Ziyad. Awalaysa hadihi li yahud wa nasara yaqra'una tawrat wa injil. Christians and the Jews, are they not reading Torah and Injil? Are they not reading it? Is their books not with them? لا يعلمون لا يعملون بشيء مما هم منهما لا يعملون بشيء مما فيهما. Are the Christians and the Jews are they not reading their books? Here's the Torah, here's the Injil. The Christians and the Jews they have their books, but they are not implementing anything in it. Are you with me? So when the people stop implementing the knowledge, and then that means they have left a great portion. And that's exactly what happened to the Christians and the Jews. What are, they, uh, the, what are the Christians doing now when they go to the church? They're whistling and they're dancing. That's what their worship has now turned into. Right next to my house in South London, there's a church right in front of me, literally. Right, it's closer to me than the other side of the road. And on Sunday, they come. And... Wallahi, you think to yourself, this place is a disco. The music that's on, the whole place is blasting. And they come out, it's black community, so they come out. They, the way they are dressed is like it was a club. So, it's like it's a club. What turned their religion into this? How did their religion turn into this? Because they stopped implementing their religion. And now their religion is distorted. It is tampered with and it's become this way. So how many types of people are there? There are three types of people when it comes to this principle. The first ones are those who've combined between beneficial knowledge and righteous actions. And they're the ones who Allah said, الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ They're the ones who Allah, Allah bestowed His blessings upon. The second group are the maghdubi alayhim, those who Allah is angry with. And they're the ones who took knowledge only and they left off actions. And the third type of people are who? The dalun, the misguided ones. They only came with actions and they left off knowledge. They were doing action without knowledge. Al-Qa'ida Al-Ashirah The last Qa'ida of today insha'Allah ta'ala Annahum ya'taqidun anna al-jama'a aslun min usooli deenihim The tenth is that Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'a believe that the dawa, the Jama'a the Jama'a is a foundation from the foundations of their religion Unity they believe it's a foundation from the foundations of their religion. If you guys go to the Kitab al itisam written by Imam al-Shatibi, Imam al-Shatibi, Abu Ishaq al-Shatibi, Abu Ishaq al-Shatibi, and not Abu Qasim al-Shatibi, who is the author of the Kitab Hirz al-Amani wa Wajhu al-Tahani, the Imam of Qiraat, not him. I'm speaking about Al Imam Abu Ishaq al Shatibi. Abu Ishaq al Shatibi has a book called Al I'tisam. And what he said was that the word Jama'a has come in five meanings. There's a khilaf amongst the Salaf and the meanings that they define what the word Jama'a means. Al Jama'a, the Jama'a. What does it mean? Five aqwal, five qawl, five opinions. So you guys go to the Kitab al-Itisab and check on it. 
I'm just going to give you the summary of what it is. The khulasa and the summary of what it is. Al jama'a is anything that has three things with it. The first one is aqidatun sahiha. Jama'a means the correct aqidah. Second is going back to the kitab and the sunnah when, when disputation occurs and difference of opinion comes when that happens take it back to the kitab and the the kitab and the sunnah and the third one is the third one is advising the Muslim leader and obeying him and advising others to obey him with these three will come jama'ah the aqwal of the salaf revolve around those three points it's a summary of the three five views Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded us to come together. He said, وَعَتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا Hold on to the rope of Allah and do not differ. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he said, حَبْلُ اللَّهِ The rope of Allah is the jama'ah. Hold, hold on to the jama'ah. What's the jama'ah? The correct aqidah. Brothers and sisters, the correct? The correct? Aqidah. And bringing back matters to the what? The Kitab and the Sunnah, and, you, and all of us coming together under a Muslim leader. That's the Jama'ah. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? With those three points, the Jama'ah is correct. These people will unite. If the Muslims don't have a leader, there's no leader. Are you there? Brothers and sisters, pay attention. The Prophet was asked this question. If there's no Imam, فَإِن لَمْ يَكُنْ إِمَامٌ If there is no Imam, good. And there is nobody you can find who's holding on to the correct Aqeedah. وَلَا jama'a. The Prophet specifically been asked this question. This is a fatwa being put to the Prophet. What do you advise me to do, Hudayfa said. The Prophet said to him, so now we have Muslims who have different groups, different sects. There's no Muslim leader on us. No one is holding on to the kitab and the sunnah. What is it I, I was told to do? Some people would say, work with the groups. Work with those Muslims. Unite with them. Show a united face. The Prophet sallallahu said, فَعَتَزِلْ فِرْقَةَ كُلَّهَا Free yourself from all of those groups. Don't associate yourself with them at all. Don't have anything to do with them. Stay away from them. I have nothing to do with you. Because I was commanded to come to you with three things. al aqidah al-Sahihah. That you have correct aqidah. That you're calling to the Kitab and the Sunnah. When disputes occur, that we go back to the Kitab and the Sunnah. We don't go back to Article 1, Article 2 that the, the, the Hizb has made, the group has put together. And with that, that's what judges us. La, la, la. Niza happened. Al-Kitab and Sunnah should judge us. The third thing is, they have bay'ah to a person. I was told to give bay'ah to a Muslim leader. Are you with me, brothers? Let's take, for example, Hizb al-Tahrir, for example. Hizb al-Tahrir, they don't have aqidah. They, they, they are, they are mu'tazila. They don't take. They don't take what? They don't take singular narrations in aqidah. They also even give precedence to logic over what? Textual evidences. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? I hope you understand this point. So there's no aqidah sahihah. They're mu'tazila. They're afraqh al-mu'tazila. They're a modern manifestation of the mu'tazila. Are you with me? Second thing is that when you have a dispute with them, where do they take it back to? They've set a... Within the group, there is a constitution. There are lawa'ih that they wrote. There are articles that they wrote. So when things happen, you go back to that. True or false? The... The murid or the murshid or whoever is gonna, you're gonna go to him and you're gonna sit with him and he's gonna tell you everything. The third thing is 
the lead that they had, you have to give bay'ah. You gave pledge of allegiance. Bay'ah. Are you with me? Who were we told to give bay'ah to? Huh? A bay'ah is to a Muslim leader. Muslim leader. Are you with me? We don't give bay'ah to groups. And that's a mas another mas'ala in and within itself. So with these three, you free yourself from them. There's none of the three that's there. فَعَتَزِلْ فِرَقَ كُلَّهَا Stay away from all of these groups and have nothing to do with them. Now these people who've made their own leader, who don't hold on to the correct aqeedah, pay attention, and they don't go back when their disputes occur, they don't go back to the Kitab and the Sunnah. Should you free yourself from them? The message, uh, what are they now called? They're called the Hizb, they're called a the group, they're a sect now. Pay attention to this now. They are a sect, they are a group. These, this group right now that you're looking at in the eyes, Umm Salama radiallahu ta'ala anha the night, the day, Umm Salama, there was a day, she saw from her house people throwing stones at the house of Uthman ibn Affan. This was before Uthman was about to be upthrown. Uh, overthrown, sorry. And just before Uthman is about to die, a group of rebels, they uprose against him and they wanted to take him down. Umm Salama saw them and they came together. What brought them together? They united together. They made themselves all united on one objective. What was that objective? To take Uthman down. Umm Salama saw them and she said, Inna Allah wa Rasulahu Bari'a min man farraqa wa ahtazam Allah and his messenger Allah has freed himself and the messenger has freed himself from anybody who divides and becomes a group Allah is free from them the messenger is free from them Inna Allah wa Rasul Bari'a the prophets become bari Allah has become free from them min man farraqa wa ahtazam Umm Salam is his wife, she knows her husband very well. And where does that come? It comes in the Quran. Allah says, Wala takunu minal mushikeen, minal ladheena farraqu deena wa kanu shi'a. Allah says in another ayah, Inna ladheena farraqu deena hum wa kanu shi'an lasta minhum fi shay. Lasta minhum fi shay. You have nothing to do with them. Those who've divided their religion, how they divide their religion? First of all, they don't have aqeed al sahiha they are not going back to the Kitab and Sunnah when a dispute occur. They are also... They don't have a Muslim leader governing them. All three of the points I mentioned are missing from them. In this regard, are they the Jama'ah? They're not the Jama'ah. So you free yourself from them. Allah is saying to the Prophet, Less than min hum fi shay. You have nothing to do with them. You have nothing to do with them. And this is many groups in the Muslim world today. Tabligh are like that. Hizb al are like that. Sufiya are like that. Are you with me? Sufiya, I like that. Ikhwan al-Muslimin, they fall under that. All of them are Ahzabs, their groups. Free yourself from them. Don't have anything to do with them. Don't sympathize for them. The reason why you can't sympathize for them is Allah is saying to the Prophet, Min man farraqa wa ahtaza. Free yourself from those people. Billahi alaykum. What did the Prophet say to you? If you look at all of those groups today, and you analyze them, you think, okay, you realize, you come to know, after your, you take the Quran and Sunnah, you understand these qawaid, inshallah. And you say, okay, I'm going to look at them. You will see these principles that have all of those evidences is one side, and they are on another side. That they are on a, another side. Since they are on another side, our mother Aisha radiallahu ta'ala, what was she told when, she, when the ayah was read to her? Well, anzal alayka al-kitab. Those who follow the ambiguous verses. The ayats which are not clear. What was she told? Be cautious of them. Be what? Be cautious, be careful. Protect your religion. Today if I told somebody, Akhi, that doctor that you keep going to, you know him? I don't think he's a professional doctor, you know? I really don't think you should trust, your, trust your, 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 your health with him. You would make so much dua for me. You would say, Akhi, Wallahi, asabta, afatta wa ajat. May Allah grant you Jannah, man. You saved my life, man. But if I say, don't go to that masjid and don't pray there, or don't take knowledge from that person, you say to him, come on, man. Are you dividing the ummah, man? Which was more important, your deen or your health? 
Your deen is more important, right? Your deen is more important. Now, everything, pay attention, can be unjustly used. Somebody can be saying that same statement, but they're just, just saying it. They just don't want you to take some knowledge from somebody particularly. And they say that. That doesn't mean that the idea or warning against somebody is wrong. There's nothing wrong about the warning. It's when it's unjustly done. Are you with me? When it's what? When it's unjustly done, when it's wrongly done, that's when it's wrong. But the concept of warning is right, it's good, Jamil. The religion is protected like that. Or else our religion is gonna, our message is gonna ch turn into the churches. We're gonna start singing now. If we just say, you know what, let the people, man, they've got your sincerity, man, they're nice people. Stop dividing the people. Our religion will change. And it will be tampered with. And it will alter. And wallahi, you will find, you will find, as some of the Salaf, he said, some of the Salaf, they said, Lawla, if it wasn't for this, لَخَطَبَ الزَّنَادِقَةُ عَلَى المنابر. If it wasn't for something, I don't know what they said. Huh? Now, if it wasn't for the ulama and hufad and ahlul ilm being present amongst us, telling us to stay away from these people, take knowledge from these people, on the pulpit on Friday, you find the zanadiq, the heretics, will be given khutbah. Wallahi, donkeys will be brought into the masjid and say, Shah, nobody's stopping. Everybody's just been silent. There has to be people say, this is not going to be tolerated. This is incorrect. It goes against Qala Allah, Qala Rasul. Through that, the religion has been protected. And it's been saved from any alteration. Sah? If we all watch each other do evil, another generation comes, what are they going to think? That that is all right. Isn't that what they're going to think? They're going to think that is the religion. Allah. And then the generation come after are going to be doing that and it's going to become normal and normal and normal. And it's going to be accepted amongst the people. There has to be people who reject. Say, I'm not accepting that. That's not the religion of who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that does not mean, it can be said as much as it wants, it's nothing against a particular person. Wallahi, it is not. If I go against the truth, if you go against the truth, we should all be happy. We should all be happy that the truth is prevailing. If I'm corrected in a mistake that I did, in a shortcoming I came with, in a fault I came with, I should be happy that the truth has prevailed because that is more important to me than anything I possess. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Inna Allah yarda lakum thalathan. Allah is pleased for three things for you guys. وَيَكْرَهُ لَكُمْ ثَلَاثًا And Allah hates three things for you. يَرْضَى لَكُمْ أَنْ تَعْبُدُهُ Allah is pleased for you to worship Him alone. وَلَا تُشْرِكُوا بِهِ شَيْئًا And not to associate partners with Him. وَأَنْ تَعْتَصِمُوا بِحَبْلِ اللَّهِ جَمِيعًا And that you all hold on to the rope of Allah. وَلَا تَفَرَّقُوا And don't divide him. Sisters and brothers, I ask you a question. Does the Sharia come to bring about unity or does it, bring, or does it come to bring about unity upon something? Huh? Pay attention. Unity is praiseworthy when it is done upon a correct methodology. But uniting upon batil and falsehood is not praiseworthy. This unity is null and void. Pay attention. Unity is good. Naam, sahih. But with what? Al aqeedah sahih. Correct on a correct aqeedah. When you unite on a correct aqeedah, praiseworthy. Jameel. Very good. Then nobody should try to come and divide the Muslim people who are upon the same aqeedah. Huh? But if the aqeedah are different, one is saying Allah is above his throne, and the other one is saying Allah is everywhere, there's no way to unite with that person. There's no way. Because when calamity befalls us, when we become in state of pain, I'm calling onto a Lord that's above his throne, and he's calling onto a Lord that is all over the place. Billahi alaykum, how is the dua going to be accepted? I'm asking a question. Huh? If somebody insulted your mom, would you unite with them? I'm asking a question. Yeah? Would you unite with someone who insulted your parents? Are you with you? The person who oppressed Allah by doing shirk, how are you going to unite with them? How are you going to unite with a person who has said 
through his actions. Imam Malik would say, "Man ibtada' fi al-Islam bid'ah yaraha hasana, faqad zama anna Muhammadan khana al-risala." The one who introduces into the religion a newly matter that's not from the religion, he innovates. He does something new in the religion. He's an innovator. This individual, what has he said in, through his actions? He said that the Prophet deceived us. He never brought this good. I am the one who's bringing this good to you guys. Muhammad Khanana. Muhammad has deceived us. That's what he's saying through his actions. And Imam Malik said this. So how are you going to in, smile and laugh in the face of a person whose actions is saying that the Prophet deceived us? Insulting the Prophet. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? Huh? Would you sit with somebody who sat with somebody? Pay attention. Would you sit with somebody who sits with somebody who insults your parents? No, you wouldn't. Akhi, you know that that person insults my parents. I told you, stop it, man. They did this in my family. And you're friends with them. You get angry and upset. Akhi, why are you sitting with this person? Why are you enjoying life with them? This person says, that's your own parents. Allah is greater. And the right of the messenger is greater. So the upsetness and the sadness is all connected to what? Ashadu an la ilaha illallah and ashadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. So the unity has to be done on the rope of Allah. That's what we unite upon. And that you advise the leaders above you. Advise them. And Allah dislikes for you three. Qila wa qal. Allah, he hates qila wa qal. So and so said. Wa kathrat as su'ali. And asking too many questions. Wa idha'at al mali. And also what? And also destroying wealth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he dislikes these three. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he dislikes these three. I mean, the Prophet dislikes these, dislikes these three as, as well. Inshallah ta'ala, we finish the ten qawa'id like that. Anything which I have said that was wrong and incorrect is from me and shaitan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi.